Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome to the start of this playthrough of Dino Crisis 2 for a month or so of Dino. Pretty sure everybody knew this was one of the games that I had picked for an LP, and I've been wanting to play through this ever since I finished my LP of the first game, which was only last summer, I think. That was for the last month or so of Dino. So I'm looking forward to doing this LP, and I know there's a fair number of people who have been looking forward to it as well. This is, of course, the much more action-oriented sequel to the survival horror Dino Crisis. And as I mentioned before, I have played some of this when I was a kid. I remember renting it, but I definitely didn't get that far because I don't remember much of the stuff that I know comes later in this game. Like, I know there's apparently a whole section with marine reptiles. I was going to say water dinosaurs, but obviously they're not dinosaurs. But there's a whole section like that, and I definitely would have remembered that. I think the farthest I ever got is fighting two giant blue regular dinosaurs. Like, they weren't bosses, they're just a stronger regular dinosaur. That's the farthest I remember playing as Regina. So, let's get in here. I'm tempted to pick hard, but I don't know how hard that is, so we're just going to go with normal. This is, after all, a very different game from the first one. One year has passed since the third energy incident. Dr. Kirk's research on Third Energy has been taken over by a government agency, and massive research has begun at a base somewhere in the Midwest. However, in their pursuit of immediate results, they have failed to take the necessary precautions, and once again, an accident has occurred. This time, the entire research base, military institution, and a small town close by have disappeared. In their place, there now lies a jungle from another time. So they learned absolutely nothing from the events of Ibis Island, and just caused an even worse time distortion. This is the part that's kind of weird. So we're not going to the island in modern day. They have been sent back in time to where the island was displaced to, not what May became 10th, 20 in the modern day. I'm about to step through a gate to another time. Or maybe it's another world. I'm being sent in with other members of TRAD. Our mission? To rescue 1,300 survivors and collect data on the Third Energy Project. I guess that means that there's also going to be dinosaurs on the island in the modern day. They're just not our concern. We're here to rescue the survivors. They never told us to expect dinosaurs. You think Regina at least would know what's going on here? Though it doesn't really explain why there's such a massive pack of raptors. <laughs> Dylan could have stepped to the side, but instead he combat rolled out of the way of that tree. <laughs> That Rex, I think, is also pretty durable. Like, yeah, obviously bullets wouldn't affect it much because it's so large and it's got thick skin. But I think an RPG might have blown its head up. And thus, our whole expedition was defeated by dinosaurs, except one cowboy. <sighs> so, this is the Cretaceous way of welcoming guests, huh? Not exactly the red carpet treatment. Hmm. There's no response. I'm, I'm pretty sure my team's alright. 
There's more than a thousand survivors. Let's get moving. Now hold on. What was your name again? Hey! <laughs> The ivy is wrapped around the door. It won't open. Let's try the door over there. Oh, come on. Didn't they teach you how to open a door at sort training? Here, I'll show you. Watch this. So we've got our two protagonists here who are from equally stupidly named special forces, Trat and Sort. Uh, yeah. That weapon definitely suits a Trat member. But I prefer to go in this way. See ya, Mr. Barbarian. Hey, the name's Dylan. Call me that when you need some help, okay? Also, this weird blurring is just part of the cutscenes of this game. All the in-engine cutscenes have that weird blur to them, and that's just a design choice they went with. I'm not really sure why. I guess it's supposed to look, make it look more smooth, but it doesn't, really. Okay, med pack. So yeah, just to go with the full-on action thing, we sprint around at full speed while aiming our gun, which uh, makes it kind of hard to be accurate, since you don't really have the same level of snap. I mean, if you stand still and you hit the aim, you will snap to the nearest target, so that still works, but you have to, like, unaim to do that. We also have a quick turn, which is very quick, even faster than any of the Resident Evil ones. But you're also going to need that, because we're dealing with more than just zombies. Looks like his torso has been ripped. He must have died a while ago, and worked out a lot. Above this cliff is where the base camp was set. The cliff is too steep to climb. I like how, too, we just got entirely wiped out, and they're like, well, better carry on with the mission. Ivy's wrapped around the fence. The plants are not from our time. Well, we're not in our time, so that makes sense, Dylan. It's become all red from rust. It is empty. Also, did you see how many barrels they had in their camp? Are you gonna tell me those all came on one boat with them? Their little hovercraft thing? It has been sitting here a long time. The ivy is all over. And it looks like it won't move. Electronically locked. You may be able to short it with Regina's stun gun. I mean, they showed us basically in the cutscene there what our characters can do right now differently. So Regina can open locks like that, and Dylan can cut open locked doors. Alright, let's head into the raptor zone. Jungle, North Route 1. So, conserving ammo isn't really a problem here, because we have 100 shots for our shotgun right now, and we don't have to reload. So we just want to blast once we run into dinosaurs. I don't remember the first game having that blur on cutscenes. It's definitely going to make a pain in the ass getting thumbnails. Alright. So, you have a combo meter now, and it gives you extinction points, which are currency. We also have a machete, which is handy for knocking down dinosaurs. It's on a separate button. So, we want to try to keep our combo going, because you get more points the higher your combo gets. Raptors will kind of continuously spawn, but I think you need to change screens to keep them coming. Like, if I stand here for a while, I think they'll eventually spawn again. But if I switch screens like this, then they'll immediately respawn more. So we're going to be killing a lot more dinosaurs in this than the first game. Jeep has been smashed by a mudslide. It's blocking the path. So, even though it's for a very different reason, this game has the same kind of overgrown facility aesthetic that I really liked in Lost World, Jurassic Park. So I'm going to enjoy that as we go through this too, just kind of like all this stuff that's been sitting around in the jungle, rusting away for... Well, it's not really clear how long it's been since this place was transported in this time. Alright, so we're probably going to have to farm dinosaurs at some point, but since we can't even spend our points yet because there's no store... No, Dylan, please, why would you lock onto that one? Can you get up here? I think they can jump. Yeah. 
Can I just, like, spawn a bunch of them by going back and forth between screens like that? Wait, did I just go backwards? There's definitely a delay between screen changes. I don't know how noticeable it'll be in the video, but let's see if I can try to fix that. Okay, do we have a map? That's a file, that's not what I want. This file contains a few pointers which may help you in the beginning of your mission, especially when you become lost or stuck. Extinction points. When you kill your enemy, you will earn points called extinction points. On this mission, you will buy ammo, weapons, health recoveries, and other items using these extinction points. It is important for a smooth and successful mission that extinction points be earned efficiently. However, extinction points won't do you any good unless you use them. I recommend equipping yourselves with the most powerful weapon whenever possible. When you kill an enemy, points earned will be displayed on the screen. If you succeed in killing additional enemies while the points are being displayed, your credit increase rate will go up. This is called a combo. This is an important technique you should learn to use. Combat techniques. The R1 button, you can move about in a firing stance. You can even change from target to target by pressing the L1 button while holding down. Okay, that's helpful to know. Following items will be shared by everyone on the team. Health recovery items, key items, extinction points, main and sub weapons with an exception of a few. So we won't have to grind separately as Regina. During your mission, you may come across instances where you cannot carry any more health recovery items. In these situations, you should use the unnecessary recovery items, which will make space, allowing you to carry another item. Okay, that wasn't actually the map, though. I was hoping there was a key for the map. So there's two exits to this area. You can see the path that Regina took actually goes back to the ship we got here on. I don't think I can actually move around this map. So I think this leads back. And I'm pretty sure we can't go this way yet. Um, we both missed there. Oh, okay. We only took one shot. Also, I find it interesting that for this game, they went back to pre-rendered backgrounds, because Dino Crisis 1 used entirely 3D backgrounds. Whereas this one, which is the more action-y one, went with Resident Evil's backgrounds, but I guess it's so they could put more detail into the dinosaurs. Because obviously you can have more detailed models if you're not spending your polygon budget on the background. They're pretty generous about how long they give you to get the combo back. Like, until that points disappears, you can still get more. We also need these points to reload our gun. You can't pick up ammo, so we want to make sure we have a good stock. No damage. That's an extra 2,000 points. So I think this will be a much shorter LP than the first game, because there isn't really going to be, I think, many puzzles for me to get stuck on. I didn't even see that fourth one. Nope, not done yet. Also, you can see some of these areas are very small. Could I just, like, farm by shooting one dinosaur and then going out of the level to get the no damage bonus? I'm sure there's various ways to cheese it. Okay, so I think we're going the right way. I believe the first place we have to go is the military facility. I'm trying to remember how far I got when I did the first impressions, or... I think I called it a first impressions, even though I had sort of played it... ...in the past. I definitely got to the facility, because I remember the cutscene with the biker girls, as we'll see shortly. med pack. Um, I don't know how much that heals you for if you don't have any items. Med pack S. Okay. See, I, I wanted to find out how much that would actually fill up so I know when to use them. K. 
king of the hill up here on the shipping crate. It seems like sometimes it only takes a single shot. Medpack L. And we do also have the resuscitation item to start with, which is the, you know, it's basically a revive if we die. Are you having some trouble down there? Apparently, the first Dino Crisis didn't actually fully get released in the state that Shinji Mikami wanted. He actually wanted there to apparently be better dinosaur AI than they ended up with, but was satisfied enough when it came out. I thought that was interesting. And I wonder if that applies to this one as well. Though the first game was considered a success, I do wonder why they decided, hmm, let's go with a more action-y approach. I mean, I guess it's kind of the same situation with Resident Evil to Resident Evil 2. Ooh, counter. Is that worth extra points? I guess if you hit them right before they actually finish their attack animation. didn't work out great. Alright, so the bikers have run off. It's a control panel for checking the operation of the water tower. It's completely rusted. I like how, too, they went with the much more action-y game, but there's, you can still basically examine like every little thing in the environment for a bit of dialogue. Alright, so we got a dino file. The file contains data collected by the military about the dinosaurs that live in this world. I assume this is the military of the island and not the military that was sent in, Velociraptor, meaning Swift Caesar, length 4.8 meters, height 1.8 meters. These, of course, are the Jurassic Park style of Velociraptor and not the actual raptor they're based on, the Deinonychus. Observation records. We originally thought of dinosaurs were just slow and dumb reptiles. We soon realized this wasn't true at all. The Velociraptor proved us all wrong. The claw on each foot is sharp as a blade, providing for a powerful slash, making them a killing machine. The long, hard tail is used as a balance when running at high speeds. However, it is also used as a weapon. Their tail whip is so powerful that it can shatter bones. Combat Notes When and if you encounter them, never show your back to them. The moment you start running away, you become prey, uh, to them. What? <laughs> there, this definitely has some janky translation in it. No soldier has come back alive running away from them. The basic rule in this world is to fight. The raptors are the most prosperous carnivorous dinosaurs in this world. There live different flocks in various areas. You mean like tribe A, B, and C? Their behavior and endurance are not all similar, but they have one thing in common. Speed. They are fast. It is best not to use heavy weapons. Also, on very rare occasions, there have been encounters of blue raptors reported. Their attack and toughness are said to be ultra-raptor level. Go hunt them down if you dare to claim yourself as a real hunter. So I actually did remember those being a thing, where they would show up if your combo meter got high enough. Apparently they show up if you get up to 20 combo. I don't know if we're able to kill them with the shotgun, or if that might be too weak. Alright, let's make a save. Fine, I'll save in the other slot then. Also a funny thing, I have to record this game in 60 frames, even though the whole game runs at 30, except the menus, because the menus will look laggy as shit <laughs> if I record them in 60, or 30. This menu apparently does run in 30, though, and 60, it just switched, okay. So the solid cannon is 18,000 points, so we could grind up and save up for that, but I think that'll have to wait for a while. Uh, recovery, I think we're good on healing items for the moment. We do want to fill up our shotgun. I like that you can fill it up individually, shell by shell. 
and each one costs 10 points. Which is not bad, you know, you kill one raptor, you get 100 points using one shell. So I don't think having to buy ammo is going to be a big deal, at least not for our standard weapon. I do like that his starting weapon is a shotgun, and then we can also increase the maximum capacity. Which uh, I might want to do that right off the bat. So it's actually cheaper if I get one of the bigger ones. You know, best value. Uh, we'll just go with this. I think 200 should be pretty good. Tool. Okay, nothing to buy. So I think we'll need a tool from there later. It looks like a very old sign. Military facility up ahead. Missile silo. This route has been closed due to unusual outbreak of poisonous plants. They are scheduled to be incinerated starting next week. Okay, so we're not going that way for two reasons. Poisonous plants and also the door is locked. Another resuscitation. So the first game could be pretty difficult, and I still have memories of that dreaded rooftop T-Rex fight where you're supposed to run away from it, otherwise you get insta-killed, and then you're supposed to fight it, or you get insta-killed. Oh, okay, that, that was not my trigger. They also don't do that much damage. Maybe I should have gone with hard, but these are also the starting raptors. Some compies just ran by. They were enemies in the first game. I don't know if they will be in this one. I should have swung. It's always better to swing instead of fire. If you're not sure, you'll get it out fast enough. Like that. Oh, getting chewed. Uh-oh. Okay. So my health flashing red, which means I've got bleed status. So we need a hemostat for that. Those I might have to buy since we only had one. And we'll use a small med pack, which looks like it heals half of your health. Okay, right, so med pack L is really not that great. It's just a bleed plus full heal instead of just a full heal. Seems like they're pretty generous with healing. The rubbish is blocking the tunnel path. There seems to be moss of some sort on pieces of concrete. It's a weird detail to be noticing. Okay, so we're definitely not going that way. Damn it. So where are we going? Uh, I guess just straight ahead. It's a jeep for transporting materials. Looks like it has been untouched for years. So yeah, I think a lot of time has passed in this place compared to likely how much time has passed in the regular world. Which is why everything here seems to be so overgrown and rusted for years. Alright, saved my combo. See, sometimes it seems like they'll just stop spawning. Now it's all quiet. I think they will eventually start coming back if you just run back and forth through the screens, but... Maybe they don't want you to farm too many points. Or maybe there's a limited number per area. It's just a high number. Okay, we got the long grass here on one side, so that's gotta be full of raptors. Skeet shooting raptors is a lot easier than skeet shooting birds. Also, if you get hit, you lose your combo. That raptor. Aw, oh, 
I almost saved my combo there. Trash materials can be observed from the terror of the tent. Maybe this place was used for field operation exercises. Alright, military facility. So I guess we weren't actually in the military facility earlier. Just a little building. <laughs> Well, if it is an old one eye. Back for more. One eyed menace. And just like the first game, there is no subtitles, and sometimes it's very hard to hear what they say in cutscenes. Alright, thankfully it's not an insta kill. Dylan, would you please climb the ladder? Thank you. I guess this is our first boss encounter. Not really much we can do. All we have is a shotgun. It's going to take more than just a regular weapon to kill the T-Rex. Better to find an escape route. Oh, come on, you're gonna tell me I can't take him? Can we get in that tank back there? Uh-oh. So we want to use an M. Probably kind of not the right way to go. Oh, come on, grab that. All right, use a quick turn and go. Also, I don't think it's you're able to go slow in this game. I think you're always sprinting no matter what. So is this T-Rex just going to be dogging us the whole game? Oh no. Motorcycle ninjas. That shoot exploding discs. He really had to gang up on me with that T-Rex. Yeah, get out of here, you little shits. Alright, so that wasn't too bad. I'm pretty sure if we had that same encounter in the first game, it would have been an insta-kill if we got bit. There's something on the desk covered with dust. You have found a new dino file. Okay, apparently these are hidden in the environment sometimes. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Meaning, Tyrant Lizard King. 14.5 meters, 4.8 meters height. Observation record. As the name states it well, they are the largest land carnivores of this Cretaceous world. They act upon their hunter instinct and are always on the hunt for prey in order to sustain energy for their gigantic body. What is so special about them is their implacability. Once they set their eyes on its prey, they have a habit of pursuing it. Soldier once reported that he saw one swimming trying to follow its prey. Hey, remember that from the end of the first game? Not to mention their savageness. After making a toy of their prey, they will finish it with a lethal bite. Combat notes. No reports have come in with regards to killing a T-Rex. Every soldier who tried to kill it have died. There are hardly any combat data. If we were forced to give an indirect conclusion, we would say that the T-Rex has no real weaknesses. Rumor has it that there was one person who escaped from the implacable T-Rex chase. She was not a soldier, but simply an intelligence personnel. Supposedly, good-looking, about 20 years old, very relevant to the T-Rex. We want you to be kind of certain who it is that we're talking about. The reception desk. Appears as though nobody has sat here for a very long time. So I guess we've been transported to Cretaceous? The roof is destroyed and the steel frame is bent. The way it's blocked, you can't go this way. Okay. Kinda looks more like a diner in here. With the floors and the door design. A message is posted. Attentioned. Attentioned is not a word. Attention to the staff. Medicine and other related supplies have run out. Please cooperate in the sample collections of wild drug plants. Medical room. Can 
medical room is this way. It sounds like it's a save room. This is the same save room music from the first game, right? Resuscitation pack. Bottles for filling medicine are placed here. They are almost all empty. Hey look, a skeleton. He must have been attacked while in his sleep. There are no signs of resistance. Got the key plate. Uh, okay. Can we further examine this to see what kind of key it is? It can be used to unlock the electronic lock in the military facility. See, that's the information I wanted. So I guess there's not going to be any storage boxes in this game, based on what it said about the healing items. The flesh has been ripped from his stomach to his leg. Looks like a few years have passed since his death. Again, proving that time has passed differently here. It's a shelf for freezing many medicine and chemicals. Doctor's papers, time shift. Again, the day has come, January 14th. This is the day when the third energy accident occurred and we were sent to this time. This is the tenth time this day has come, so ten years have passed? And every time I feel the same, despair. The medical supplies from the med room have all been used up in the very first year. Since then, we've been collecting wild plants to make medicine without knowing its effect. Nevertheless, they were used in the healing the wounds of the soldiers. Wait, so they just randomly tried out plants and like, did this heal anybody? It's like Oblivion-style alchemy. Just stuff it in your mouth and see what its effects are. All we could do was to wait for the rescue. Why haven't they come to rescue us? I thought about the question for the past ten years, and I have come to a conclusion. The time shift, or fold, is caused by the overdrive of the third energy. But our current technology level wasn't high enough to recover the accident. Years of technology research still would not be enough. A time error of... 10 or 20 years is insignificant to a time slip of 65 million years. But that error, that time difference, could mean everything for us. We should have never laid our hands on a toy so dangerous and then insisted on using it in a way we already knew was not beneficial. I mean, clearly they developed some advances in technology that let them send an entire boat full of men to a different time. Alright. Load up our gun. We have 9,000 points. Still no tool. Uh, do I want to buy some hemostat? I feel like I should buy two of these. And I think that's the most amount of healing items we can carry right now. And still only the solid cannon. Alright, so about half an hour in. I guess we'll go a little bit further, and then maybe we'll double back to the save point to end the episode. But yeah, I'm enjoying this game as I thought I would, and it's definitely a fair bit easier than the original. Unable to carry any more items. Electronically locked, you may be able to short it with Regina's stun gun. I guess this is not the door that we need the electronic key for. Let's check the map. Um, well, there's that door in the main hall. I guess that's the way to go. And I am excited to see the underwater area. Oh, jeez. Okay, these are a different kind of raptor. Which means they're probably a bit tougher. How are you guys spawning in in this tiny room? They're coming through the door whenever you're not looking.
Okay, so where's the store? Oh, it's back outside in the jungle. I was going to say, I think that's just indicating the locked door, but no, we have to go out here since we were cutscene forced to go in. Okay, the T-Rex is still out here. I guess he's very determined to eat us. Hardware storage. Like, firearms hardware? Hmm? It's a supercomputer which stores the records of the people living in this city. That doesn't seem like the kind of hardware they meant. The control panel for the shield shutter. It is used for alarming trespassers. Do you just want to startle the trespassers by alarming them? A blue light is lit. To operate, you need a key plate. Well, we do have a key plate. Nothing happened. This key plate is not the correct one for this terminal. Okay, so... I guess key plates are going to be a recurring thing. On the shelf are many computers unused. Unwanted materials and supplies have been thrown in the boxes. Storage room items. All instruments and materials will be transferred to the research facility tomorrow. Starting next month, an extensive experiment will start relating to the time gate. There just aren't enough computers to save all the data. We need as many computers as we can gather. The Time Gate's revival project is hit against a wall. We hope the experiment will bring about effective measures. Give all research facility keys to Lieutenant Wolf of the transport team today. The key cards are kept in a box in the wall of this room. Approximately 250 people of the soldiers' families have been moved to the living quarters of Edward City last month. Now it's all up to us to revive the Time Gate. So I guess at some point we are going to reach a completely overgrown city as well, being swallowed up by the jungle. Box appears to be used for storing important materials. Red light is lit. Okay, maybe we have the right key plate for this one? Alright. What does that net us? The research facility key card. You have inserted an incorrect key. Trespasser confirmed. Oh, this room will be we're being alarmed. Somebody answer me. David. Regina. Over. This is Regina. Over. Regina, I'm trapped. I'm at the military facility. I need your help. Over. Did you swing your precious machete around? Well, I guess I can help you out. Over. Good. Okay. I'll put a key in front of the door as a mark. Don't let me down. Over and out. I like how he says he's going to put this here as a mark. Like, the alarm going off wouldn't be a good enough indicator. Also, Dylan went on the path to find other people. Regina just went back to the boat? Like, she's like, yeah, fuck this mission. Oh, she's got her own theme. Alright, so she's got her stun rod. And a pistol. I think she's got a Desert Eagle. Maybe not. It looks like a Desert Eagle at the bottom left, but I think it's just a regular handgun. So she's probably not going to be as effective against Raptors. Alright, well, now that Dylan has been locked up, I think it's time to save, if we can. It's an onboard tank, especially for this ship. Looks like a high-performance gun with power. I would assume there's a save point in the ship, right? Yeah, okay. So next time, we will go rescue Dylan from a door, of all things. It's an automatic pilot flying vehicle. There is no destination programmed. It won't start until a destination has been entered. So can we just travel back to the future at any point with this thing? Alright, let's see if she has anything available. Nothing. Nothing, okay. 
All right, well, that will do it for episode one of Dino Crisis 2. And I hope you all enjoyed, and I'm looking forward to playing more of this, even if you're not looking forward to watching more of it, but I think a few of you are. So until then, take care, everyone, and see you with more dinos soon.